On today, we're going to share a history bit with regard to some information that we already have and that we have prepared in a resource called History of Sabbath Keeping throughout the centuries in the Messianic Israelite communities. This particular resource that we have here is one that I've compiled and I've had it in print now for a number of years. And for those who may be interested in this particular resource, you can obtain it. You can obtain it either by contacting us and we can mail out to you a printed copy for a donation of $10. Or you can download this resource from our website to be able to obtain it as well. Much of our information that we have in print, we also make available on our website. And if you go to www.nc mmi.20m.com all you need to do is click on the link that we have that is called the written word library the written word library and you can find this resource and download it for yourself for free what we're going to be talking about today has to do with Sabbath observance throughout the centuries, and we're going to look at the fourth century, the fourth century AD or CE. There are some quotes that I want to read to us that will help us to discover how the keeping of the Shabbat was a integral part of the faith during the fourth century. Amen. So let us um, look at Italy and Milan. There are about four quotes that I want to share. <clears throat> and it says, quote, Ambrose, the celebrated bishop of Milan, said that when he was in Milan, he observed Saturday, but when in Rome observed Sunday. This gave rise to the proverb, when you are in Rome, do as Rome does. This was written by Halen in a book called The History of the Sabbath. This was written in 1612 AD or CE. Uh, this particular quote, what it's noting is that the Bishop Ambrose, when he would go to Milan, they worship on the Sabbath, but then when he went to Rome, they worshiped on Sunday. And during the fourth century was the time in which there was a pivotal shift where the church in Rome made a decision that they would cease from regarding the seventh day Sabbath and would regard the first day of the week Sunday as being the Sabbath. And here's just a quote that notes that specific change. This is where it began. <clears throat> and I will say this as well. In the fourth centuries, there were two major churches that really spearheaded the Sunday worship. It was the church in Rome and the church in Alexandria, Egypt. Those were the two churches that spearheaded the Sunday worship. According to the history, all of the other churches in the East and also in Europe, were keeping Shabbat and honoring the Shabbat. Amen. I'll keep reading. 
Spain Council, Elvira, in A.D. 305. Canon 26 of the Council of Elvira reveals that the Church of Spain at that time kept Saturday, the seventh day, as to fasting every Sabbath resolved that the error to be corrected of fasting every Sabbath. This resolution of the council is in direct opposition to the policy the church at Rome had inaugurated, that of commanding Sabbath as a fast day in order to humiliate it and make it repugnant to the people. So what is this quote really saying? What this is saying is that in Spain, the congregation of the Most High in Spain during the beginning of the 300s was keeping Shabbat. Now, in keeping Shabbat, and it's important that we understand that, and in keeping Shabbat, because it is a day of delight, you are not supposed to fast on the Sabbath. This was a practice prior to the coming of Mashiach that you do not fast on the Shabbat. As time moved along, what the Roman church began to do was to order that fasting be done on Saturday, the seventh day, so that they would put humiliation upon the seventh day Sabbath. This was one of the things they began to do so as to supplant to take the Sabbath over and so that Sunday will be the day regarded as the, as the Shabbat instead of the what we call Saturday as being the Sabbath. This is just a quote telling us what they did. They were trying to get the church in Spain to fast on the Sabbath. And one of the canons of the Council of Elvira was that no, we will not do it. We will not follow this mandate of Rome. So, so the, the quote is showing us historically what was going on during that time. Because many are unaware of the fact that the reason why we have Sunday worship as we do on such a large scale is because, and excuse my verbiage, the Roman church as it grew bomb rushed every other congregation you understand this is what they did they bum rushed every other congregation and took over those congregations by military force because of their connection with the roman government this makes sense to everybody so i'm just giving you some history as to how the western churches came to a place of worshiping on Sunday, so much so that it seems as though since the time of Messiah, they were worshiping on Sunday, but that's not the historical reality. Everybody understand this? Yeah. I'll keep reading. Another quote I want to read to us has to do with Persia, A.D. 335 through 375. This quote says, They despise our sun god. Did not Zorcaster, the sainted founder of our divine beliefs, institute Sunday 1,000 years ago in honor of the sun and supplant the Sabbath of the Old Testament? Yet these Christians have divine services on Saturday. This is noted by O'Leary in a book called The Syriac Church and Fathers, page 83 and 84. So in this quote, what this quote is doing, it is using a statement by a pagan worshiper of the sun. And this particular pagan worshiper of the sun is noting that Zorcaster, who was the one who created this particular uh, religion, 
or I'll say branch of sun worship, had a thousand years before the fourth century, note, instituted Sunday as being the day of worship and rest to somehow supplant the Sabbath that our Israelite ancestors were keeping. But the point that I want to note here is the last part of the quote, because it says, yet these Christians have divine services on Saturday. In other words, they were meeting on the Shabbat. This is just a sidebar note made by a pagan to say that these believers in the Messiah are honoring the Sabbath and meeting on the Sabbath. As I noted, this was noted by a Persian. That's what it's noted by a Persian. And it's with regard to the Syriac church and church fathers. So what we're discovering is that these churches of the East, that would be East of Rome, still kept the Sabbath, worship on the Sabbath, honored the Sabbath. And not only is there testimony by church fathers, but there's testimony also by pagan worshipers of what the practice was. I hope everybody's catching this. Last quote. Council of Laodicea, 365 AD CE. Canon 16. On Saturday, the Gospels and other portions of Scripture shall be read aloud. Canon number 29. Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. This was written by Hephels on Councils, Volume 2. <clears throat> now, this particular quote is telling us that in the Council of Laodicea, this is where they began to make a, an official religious edict to now look at the seventh day Sabbath with disdain. And as they state, <coughs> shall not Judaize or be idle on the Saturday. What it's saying is believers are not supposed to rest on Saturday. Believers are not, not, now, now they're saying here, not supposed to Judaize because this is a practice that is carried over from the Hebrew scriptures. All right. It says, but they're supposed to have honor for, as they call the Lord's Day. At this particular time in the fourth century, Sunday had been regarded as the Lord's Day. And notice what it says in this quote also. And that if possible, do no work on that day. So what we see at this Council of Laodicea is where we find the shift occurring. We see more of an official shift occurring where there is a a, a canon, when you, when you see a canon, that's, that's really what you call religious law. They have a religious law that they are, that they are implementing now to stop resting on the seventh day Sabbath and to start resting on the Sunday. Happened right here in the Council of Laodicea, latter part of the fourth century. So as we're understanding Sabbath keeping throughout the centuries, it's also important for us to note the history that is revealing to us when things began to change and shift and how they shifted. It all came through what I would call church law or canon law, which was something that developed within the Western branch of the church, i.e. the Roman Catholic Church. And so with 
this information being brought to our attention, I hope that it has helped us to come to a better understanding as to how the present Western Christian faith has developed and has become the way it has become and how it looks today. It is not the same as the original Messianic Israelite community that our Messiah and apostles brought forward. And so it's our hope that as we present this information to you, it would help you to have greater security in your faith and in your practice as you learn that as you keep Shabbat, you are connecting with the ancient faith that our Messiah and his Sheliakim, his apostles, laid down for us. I trust this information was helpful to you and beneficial as you grow in your faith. Amen. So we thank the Almighty and we give him praises for it. Amen.